Yes, sir. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you very much, Senator Kane. Senator Cotton, please. Thank you. Gentlemen, congratulations on your nominations and congratulations and thank you uh, to your families and your mentors and the NCOs across the course of your career who brought you to this point. Uh, General Nordhaus, obviously the National Guard plays a very critical role for our nation. We see them at home responding to natural disasters or crises, uh, but we also rely on them for our national security. As some of the other senators have said about their National Guard, uh, the Arkansas National Guard was just last year in Germany providing critical support and training to Ukraine's armed forces where I visited with them. And just next week, we'll have a ribbon cutting ceremony at Ebbing Air Force Base for the new foreign training mission for the F-35. Um, these are very vitally important, not just for the Arkansas National Guard, but also for our nation's security. And, and I know that I have your commitment to support that just as much as your predecessors have, correct? Yes, sir, uh, support those important programs that you talked about. Thank you. Um, I, I wanna turn to an issue that's kind of at the intersection of your current role at, at NORAD and that might be uh, in your role at the National Guard Bureau. Um, you're familiar, obviously, with the high tempo of drone incursions over our military installations, um, not just in places like Iraq and Syria, but here in the United States to include National Guard bases. Uh, what's your view of the National Guard's role in defending installations and domestic infrastructure from such drone incursions? Senator, uh, you raised an important issue. Uh, counter small UAS and uh, protecting our bases is absolutely vital. Uh, we are seeing uh, increased uh, uh, incursions uh, through uh, Nord Northcom uh, Commander General Gio, uh, which sets the force protection across the United States. Uh, bases uh, have that responsibility to uh, defend and secure their um, and protect their bases. Uh, the same would be for the National Guard in, in the bases. And so I'd work whole government approach and certainly with uh, the services that has taken this uh, issue very seriously and on weekly uh, meetings to make sure we get after the problem. Okay. Um, do you have the relevant authority you need right now to support DHS and DOJ when we see drone incursions violating U.S. airspace controls over U.S. military installations? Senator, authorities are different in the United States than they are overseas. And so I know General uh, Gio, uh, Nor Northcom, as the synchronizer uh, for the Department of Defense Certainly looking at those and working those authorities to make sure uh, if additional ones are needed that that's brought forward. Um, we want to make sure that uh, we have the right capability, both either kinetic or non-kinetic, uh, to understand and domain awareness so that we can sense uh, the incursions and then that we have the problem set right and the authorities uh, to use what's ever needed to protect our people and our equipment. Thank you. A any thoughts on what you might do if confirmed about the long-term procurement and sustainment uh, of capabilities needed for a homeland counter drone mission? Oh, for the counter drone, uh, drone mission. Uh, yes, Senator, we'll work with our services who are the procurement authority. So I'll certainly work with General Alvin and General George as we look forward to the best way to, uh, to defend our bases and, and protect our people. Okay, thank you. Admiral Halsey, I wanna talk a little bit about Haiti. Um, there's a current UN plan of the multinational security support mission to deploy around 2,500 personnel to Haiti, mostly from Kenya and Benin, but also some Caribbean nations. Uh, I have to say this strikes me as a totally harebrained scheme. Uh, Port-au-Prince, for instance, has 1.2 million people. It's overrun by gangs and militias, and it lacks a functioning government. Um, I, I know that in your current role or your future role, you don't shape policy as it relates to Haiti, but I, I do want to know from your military expertise and your role as the current deputy commander in Southcom, what do you think is the prospect of success for a force of 2,500 personnel to stabilize a, a city of 1.2 million people without an effective government? Senator, thanks for that question. As I look at the current layout, right now we're planning for approximately 1,000 at this point is what we're looking at. Uh, so it's a very challenging problem set, right? But I was sure if you, as I look at uh, at least one metric, uh, right now we have the uh, about 350, almost 380 or so uh, Kenyans on the ground. When I look at the number of Haitians coming through the Darien, I've seen that number trending down for the last couple of months. I think that's somewhat sending a signal to at least the Haitians that they're willing to wait and see 
how this plays out, but it will be a, a very challenging problem set, sir. Yeah, I think it'll be challenging as well. And what concerns me most is there's a, a fairly long history of our interventions or the UN's interventions in Haiti, and they don't have a very good, good end stories, especially the United Nations and what some of its officials have done in Haiti. Um, I just worry very much that other nations are biting off more than they can chew uh, under a harebrained UN scheme, and where are they going to turn in a crisis? They're going to turn to you and to the United States and our personnel, and, and we might end up in a situation where we have to put American forces at least into the ports to help evacuate people, and I think that would be very, very unwise for our nation. So I, I agree that 2,500 troops or even a few more than that is unlikely to do much in Haiti and puts our own personnel potentially at great risk in the future. Thank you. Sir. Congratulations both. Sir. Thank you very much, Senator Cotton. Senator King, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.